Well, hello there, YouTube. It's Ro here. Thank you for visiting You Grow Ro. If you've been here before, thank you so much for coming back. I appreciate you. If this is your first time, I hope you'll consider subscribing at the end of this video. Today, I need your guys' help. I do. I do. I really do. Um, I can't decide what to grow. You guys have helped me before, um, and now I need you to help me again. But we'll do all that helping right after this intro. And in the past, I would maybe use two or three of my units during the summertime, and then, but mostly I would just be gardening outside. And this year it's quite different. I'm growing a lot less indoors and out. And so I've been using my units indoors further into the summer. And I decided I'm gonna use them in the entire summer this year, seeing as how I'm growing so much less outside and inside. And then, but I did do a video on using my new uh, stackables so that I could put my two farms together, farm excels together down in my dining room. I still haven't planted those up, you guys. I don't know what I want to plant. And so I've been struggling. And if Tim were up here, I would call him into my office and he would tell you, I have been sitting with my seeds after work, on the weekends, whenever, trying to figure out what it is that I want to plant and grow during the summer indoors. And I've just had the hardest time. Those two downstairs units, I need some help. So, for the unit on the bottom, uh, I, I decided that I want to do broccoli again. I grew broccoli in a Arrow Garden Bounty, what, two years ago? And then prior to that was one year prior to that. So I've done this twice already and I know it works, uh, but I want to use seeds that I've not used before. And these are seeds that I've gotten I got at that uh, seed swap whenever I went to that class. And I, I think, I, did I do a video on that? I don't know, if I did, I'll put a link up here, or right here, wherever that goes, <laughs> to the video where I got to go to this thing that the city put on and it was really fun. And I got all these seeds and whatever. Um, but I ended up getting these seeds while I was there. And it's for a hybrid, type of broccoli. Problem is, they had a 99% germination rate back in 2018. Here we are in 2023, five years later. I wanna go ahead and use these broccoli seeds and uh, maybe even get some new ones. I doubt it though. I mean, goodness, it takes forever to get broccoli to go to seed, but I say that, however, look at how many days that it shows on this packet. This broccoli is supposed to only take 27 days from transplant. Huh? Huh? This could be fun. It'll be a fast grower, hopefully, and we'll be seeing changes on the weekly. So I think on that bottom unit of my um, two stackables, my two uh, farm cells. I want to plant this, what's it called? Hybrid mini broccoli. And the seeds are from Johnny Seeds. Don't need help figuring out what I'm going to do with that. Now, the top one, I finally decided that I want to put a tomato in there that I haven't grown before, a determinant tomato that I haven't grown before. So, you guys, I have five packs of seeds here and I want you to help me decide what I should plant. Now we've done something like this before. Uh, I don't know, maybe six months back, three months back. I don't know, I'm bad with time. Uh, I asked you guys for help figuring out what type of pepper I was gonna plant in my Farm XL and you guys decided on the Tobago seasoning pepper which I grew. And uh, the reason you haven't seen an update on that is because 
I moved it outside and I've lost the tag. Surprise. I don't know which plant it is out there. I have no idea. It's still alive, but it ain't in the Farm XL, so I don't know which one it is. I have no idea. Um, and I've started some new seeds for the Tobago in my uh, bounty that I'm looking at right now, but they it's just now getting a little tail, so it's not really you know anything to write home about. At any rate, uh, in that top Farm XL, I want to grow a tomato, determine a tomato that I haven't grown already. And the reason for this is one, I have so many seeds and I keep buying them. I'm currently waiting for three orders, <laughs> three from one website uh, and my gardener. So they, they, so I bought seeds from them on June 30th. They put out a sale on July 5th, I think it was. I put in an order on July 6th, I wanna say. And then I got a gift card from somebody who loves me and is an enabler for that same website when they saw that I posted that sale. And then I went back and bought some more the following day. So I'm waiting on three orders from one website. So I, I just, I keep accumulating seeds and they're coming at me faster than I can grow them. And so I was like, listen, let's grow a tomato we haven't grown before indoors or period, really, really. So, okay. So I went through my seeds and I picked out five of my determinate varieties that I'm interested in growing this summer indoors in a Arrow Garden Farm XL. So help me decide which one it is. Um, you can make a comment down below, uh, but really mostly I would like you to, I'm gonna make a community post. I would really like you to put your voice, voice. That was a combination of voice and vote. <laughs> but I would really like you to put your vote on my community post that I'm gonna put out right after I publish this video. So the first one I've chosen here is the Tomato Bush Goliath. It's a hybrid and it tells me nothing about it on the packet. So I'm gonna have to go on the website and read what this is for you and me so we can know <laughs> what this thing is about. One second. All right, so I'm on their webpage and it says that the, and this is the Pine, pine Tree Garden Seeds. Uh, apparently they're celebrating 40 years of business. And it says the Bush Goliath Tomato is an F1 hybrid and it's 68 days to maturity. The description says, the Bush Goliath tomato is flavorful and sweet with great yields of four inch fruit. This is one of the best early tomatoes. Topping off at four feet, the Bush Goliath tomato was developed for growing in limited spaces and on patios. Grown in a container, it can be brought indoors and overwintered for an extended harvest. Resistance to ver verticillium, root knot, nematode, and fusarium, fusarium race one. So that's your first choice. Second choice is the 506 bush. Seeds from uh, tomato growers. And it says here, full maturity at 62 days. That's after transplant. It says bright red fruit grows on strong vines that reach only about 18 inches tall. 18 inches. I don't know if I even wanna see. That's the thing. I was trying to look for, I didn't read that. And I was trying to look for tomatoes that would maximize the space that a Farm XL can accommodate. And a Farm XL can accommodate way more than 18 inches tall. So, 
vote for it if you want to, but this would not be one that I would choose now that I'm reading the description. <laughs> Sorry. Anywho, so uh, bright red fruit grows on strong vines that reach about 18 inches tall. Plants are drought tolerant and yield well. See, yet drought tolerant, who cares? It's gonna be growing hydroponically. Medium large tomatoes have a mild flavor with a hint of sweetness and are blemish free. This is a really nice variety and a very compact size. So it's an option, but don't make it your number one, please. <laughs> I'm using it in a machine that could do a lot more than this. That's my bad for not reading the description. Uh, tomato number three. And I already have notes on this one, but it's called, it's from Burpee and it's called the Atlas Hybrid. And my notes say that it is compact, bountiful, and it should produce one pound tomatoes. That's probably in ground, but maybe it could be done hydroponically. Description says, bushy, compact Atlas plants easily shoulder their bountiful loads of one pound tomatoes, semi-determinate, first harvest about 65 days after transplanting. Put that in the running, put that in the running. Although, I'm not, I'm, stop it, I should stop. <laughs> I asked you guys for help and then I'm telling you how to vote. <laughs> but that's number three. Number four is the Perrin Sprayless. See, it's from MI Gardener. And it says here, semi-determinate. And it says, do you battle diseases in your tomato plants? If so, the Perron Sprayless tomato may be for the one for you and your garden. Its disease-resistant vines are huge producers, yielding medium uniform tomatoes, giving you a fruit with a great and then runs out of words. <laughs> 70 days. Sounds good to me. It looks like your regular little run of the mill tomato. I don't know. I'm open to it. Sim or determinate. Yeah. Semi determinate, sorry. And then tomato number five to choose from. It's also from. And my gardener, it's called the Crimson Sprinter Tomato. It's a determinant. One of the original bright red varieties ever available on the market, Crimson Sprinter is the go-to all-purpose tomato. Delicious when eaten fresh in salads and slicing and cooks down. Eveling for use in sauces and soups. The ideal variety for short season growers produces five to seven ounce fruits. 65 days to maturity after transplant. So guys, that's five varieties of tomatoes. Help me choose one. What am I gonna grow in my Aero Garden Farm XL over the summer? We have the Crimson Sprinter. The pear and sprayless. The Atlas Hybrid. The 506 Bush. And the Bush Goliath. How do you vote? You can leave it below, like I said, but I would really prefer if you would make your vote on my community post that I'll be putting out shortly after this video. All right, guys. I know that's asking a lot, but really it's not. It's just a click of a button. What do you think I should grow? Weigh in, please. All right, guys. Thank you for your help, and I will see you in the next video. Take care and happy growing.